Welcome to Ask the Expert, where we bring you the top experts on dog health, training, grooming, and more. You ask it, and we will answer it. I'm Marissa Sarbach. Thank you so much for joining us today. In today's topic, we are talking about your dog's bad breath. It isn't just smelly, it can also be a health issue. So for all matters of health, we turn to AKC Chief Veterinary Officer, Dr. Jerry Klein. Dr. Klein has been emergency and critical care veterinarian for over 35 years, and we absolutely love having him here in the studio. We also have with us today Macy, an 11-year-old Yorkshire Terrier, and her owner, Jessica. Now, Macy doesn't know it yet, but she is going home today with some very clean teeth. So if this is your first time watching the show, sending us your questions is very simple. Just go to facebook.com slash American Kennel Club and comment on this video. Not AKC TV, make sure it's American Kennel Club's Facebook. We will be talking about all things dental care and Dr. Klein is an expert vet, so don't be shy, we are all here to help. So Dr. Klein, why is bad dental hygiene a problem? What are some of the negative impacts that we'll see if people aren't careful and good about it? Well, first of all, this is February, the tail end of a very snowy February, but it's also National Pet Dental Health Month. And that's a month made for awareness that owners need to take care of their dogs and cats' teeth. Because apart from the fact that bad teeth cause lousy breath, that kind of breath that will clear a room, it also can affect their health. And I think that's what the most important aspect of National Pet Dental Health Month is. The fact that uh, if they don't have good teeth, it will affect their health and affecting their health in such a way that it may affect their eating habits. They can lose weight because they can't eat properly. But more importantly, it's not just the teeth, but also the gums as well. And dogs can't floss, and cats can't floss, and even we don't floss enough. So it's important for that because gum disease can also affect metabolic health. It can affect their heart, their kidneys, and even their liver. The gums are very vascular. In other words, a lot of uh, blood vessels uh, are in that area. And if they recede, there's a lot of bacteria that develops around their teeth. And plaque is a development of bacterial film that develops on teeth. And over that, bacteria can get into the blood vessels and affect those organs. So it can affect their general health as well. So really, these are problems. I mean, that's a problem because these are issues that you're not seeing. That when you're talking about a heart issue or something else inside the body, it's something that you can't see. And plaque is invisible. The bacterial film is invisible. Eventually, plaque will lead to the development of calcium deposits, and that forms that tartar, that yellow crackly stuff that has to eventually be professionally uh, cleaned. And when we go to the dentist, they kind of chip away at our teeth, and dogs and cats eventually will need professional dental cleaning through veterinarians. Uh, that can be costly, of course, sometimes quite a, even a thousand dollars or so, because blood tests have to be run because dogs and cats will not sit still under a dental lamp uh, to, uh, for a dental cleaning and will require general anesthesia. And though it's most oftentimes completely safe, the less that we have to put a dog and a cat through general anesthesia, the better. It's better on our pocketbook and it's better for their health as well. So it's a good habit to be formed besides having just their nails trimmed and to be groomed is to be aware of their teeth and to try to do a routine dental cleaning if possible. Now, if we're not doing these routine dental cleanings, what are some of the symptoms that we would start to see? Well, the first thing is the breath becomes kind of pretty, you know, the kind of that when they're in the back seat of the car, you start to open up <laughs> the windows, even in the cold of winter, because you can't stand their breath. But also, you may see some uh, fetid saliva, you may see some blood developing around their gums or inflamed gums. And those are reasons to see a veterinarian. And like with anything else with health, Prevention is much better than a cure. So if you try to develop some kind of routine habits of uh, taking care of your dog or cat's teeth, it's that much better off for your dog's health and better for you as well. And ideally, they say daily cleaning. But to be realistically, I think most veterinarians would be very happy with owners doing a regular program several times a week on a regular basis because a little is better than none and we are very happy with owners that try to do a regular program because that's going to be beneficial for you your dog your your checkbook as you're talking about right. there's a lot of pluses for that it's a it's a win-win situation <laughs> as someone learns to do it and i think we have to stress that this is not going to be something that a dog or cat will take to right away it's a process and we have to be 
God forbid the word, patient, <laughs> and take our time in doing it. So the first things we need to do is the younger the dog and cat are, the better, in the sense that we have to get them used to having the, their mouths touched and having our finger run around their mouth so they're not freaking out or trying to bite us. And not every cat or dog will be amenable to this as much as, as others. But the earlier that we start, and if we try doing it not in a probing or insistent manner, the more luck we'll have in the future. So I think that it's something that we have to learn early on. And you know, as puppies, we, we're playing with them, but also learning that we're doing this for a reason. Just as we're teaching them to sit and stay and everything else, we're gonna teach them to have their mouth gently touch with our finger so that eventually we can use other uh, tools to try to clean their teeth. Absolutely. And we do want to remind everybody that Dr. Klein is taking questions live on Facebook right now. So head over to facebook.com slash American Kennel Club and put your questions below. So right now, Dr. Klein, I would like to send you over with Macy and Jessica to get a little demonstration going, if you wouldn't right. mind. Sure. I'm sure Macy's very excited to have her teeth cleaned today. <laughs> I'm sure she is too. So hopefully she hasn't had her teeth. Has she ever had her teeth cleaned before? No. No. So this is going to be a first. And she's 11 years of age. And like we mentioned before, Hi, Macy. Mm -hmm. So if Jessica were my client and, you know, she came, brought Macy in for an exam, the first thing we would do is we start at her face and we look at her nose and her eyes for her general health, but look at her teeth as well. And we don't just grab her teeth, but we gently lift up her lips and we look at her teeth from the front to the back. And we look to see that her front are pretty good, even though she's undershot, but they're pretty clean. But the back, she has yellow development of tartar and a little inflammation of her gum. So she has mild gingivitis and some ta uh, plaque formation. So what we can try, there's several tools that you can use. The first thing we should always know is there are products made for dogs and cats and products made for humans and we should not make uh, human toothpaste, dog toothpaste or cat toothpaste. And one of the more important reasons is human toothpaste contains something called xylitol, which is an artificial sweetener, but it can be toxic to dogs and cats. Xylitol is an artificial sweetener found in a lot of artificial gums and other baking products. And what it does do to dogs, it can drop their blood sugar levels and cause kidney issues. So we should never use human toothpaste on a dog, okay? So there are products all over that, and pet shops and pet grooming places that are made specifically for dogs. There's something called the Veterinary Oral Health Council, V-O-H-C, it sounds very important, but there's a web page for them and they have a list of approved canine and feline products, both uh, brushes and toothpaste and finger brushes, dental chews, wipes and gels that can be used and approved for dogs and cats. And your veterinarian should either have those products or should be able to show you how to do that. So if you're my client, I would kind of show you how to do this. And we start, as I mentioned briefly, by just getting used to having our teeth touched. And then one thing we can do, and most of these toothpastes are flavored. Uh, they're flavored with chicken or fish or something like that. So we have to get her used to tasting it. So put it on your finger and see if she'll take it. Do you like that? <laughs> She's okay with that. And just kind of do that a little bit. And you just work around. And you know, if you do that one day, and maybe a couple times a day, that's step one. On your second day, you can try to use one of these finger brushes. And you do the same thing a little bit on here and see if she's used to that. And you go like that and a little bit like that, like in a rubbing circular motion. Now, general rule of thumb, most plaque develops on the outer, what we call the buckle or cheek area of the upper premolars and molars. So the, on both sides. So if we're going to go into a program, you want to start with her front, her incisors, and do that, and just gently, and then work your way on the upper ones like that for oh, four to six strokes, and then on the other side as well. Okay. And if you do that, that's step two. Mazel tov. You've done really good. And then you can eventually work on the lower ones. Now, ideally, you should try to work on the inner surfaces and the uh, and the tops of the teeth. But realistically, most of the plaque will, and tartar will develop on the outside part of those back teeth. And I think most owners don't look, stretch the gums far enough to see back there. And those are the ones that are most problematic. So over a period of a couple of weeks, I want you to be working on that, those areas like that. 
and eventually you can use a brush. Now she's a small dog, so most dental brushes have two sides, one for small dogs and one for big dogs. I think this is too big for her. So you put a little bit of this, and you do the same general thing we've been doing. So this may be I'm on the fourth or fifth day, or even the second week, and you try doing this a little bit, like that. Now the whole point of this, you're not gonna do a complete dental cleaning, a 20 minute cleaning on the first couple of times. You're trying to work some kind of friction and dental toothpaste has uh, something that helps to uh, erode some of that plaque. Now the goal is eventually you'll be developing and preventing further accumulation of it. So we have sparkling white teeth, maybe not an 11 year old dog first time. And for that, she may need a professional dental cleaning to remove some of that plaque. But once you get that down, then you can keep that from preventing too fast and, you know, and hopefully a second major dental. But she did really well for her first time. And then reward her, keep rewarding her. Every time you do it, you're a good girl. So small, time, small amounts of time, fairly frequently on a regular basis. So if you're not gonna do it every day, today do it, if you could do it maybe a couple times, get her used to it. And then maybe tomorrow, and then you know, figure out some program. And on your schedule and on her schedule, but if you can do things, let's say three times a week, any veterinarian, if you were my client, I'd be really happy with that. And so when she comes back in for her next checkup, and I say, hey, wow, her teeth don't look any worse, they look even better. And that's what you're trying to get at. So there you go. Good girl, Macy. Macy was so good for it, Dr. Klein. And so something I would love to hear you touch on is just in terms of different breeds, whether we're talking about smaller dogs, mm -hmm. different types of breeds, is there uh, maybe a number of times that you should be brushing certain type of breeds do like teeth? Well, I think the schedule applies to all dogs, all breeds. As a rule, however, smaller breeds have probably worse teeth. Uh, their mouths are small, their teeth are crammed into those jaws. Uh, so sometimes we call malocclusion, where the teeth are not lined properly. Maisie, in fact, has a little bit of an undershot, and so their teeth are more apparent. But sometimes they're crooked, and with, because they're crooked, there's more accumulation of plaque and the development of tartar. But all dogs, even large dogs, can have this happen. It's also prone to the type of breed and genetics. Certain lines within a breed may have differences. The types of food that they eat, the types of dental chews, or things that they develop. So those can all affect the amount of plaque and tartar that develop and how soon. Now, there are also now products like uh, dental sprays and even dental wipes that you can use to delay or prevent the formation of plaque. So there's various things that are now approved, and I think they're listed on the Veterinary Oral Health Council mm -hmm. approved list. It sounds like a real important <laughs> worldwide it's like council. The FDA for us. It is, mm -hmm. but it is for teeth. But I think it's a very important survey, uh, a list of products that are approved that work. And you can find either online or at, through your veterinarian, and they can certainly assist you in uh, products to, to help you get the ideal effect. So when you're taking care of your dog's teeth and you have good hygiene with them, mm -hmm. is this preventing you from having to go to the vet and put your dog under anesthesia and get that professional cleaning, or is this delaying it? I think delaying is probably the ideal world, word uh, because even with us, we brush our teeth at least daily, but we still have to go to a professional cleaning. And I think with Maisie, for example, she has enough tartar developing that even daily uh, brushing will probably not get rid of that. So every dog or cat will probably need professional dental cleaning from your veterinarian. But if you can either delay or, or have that minimal, that's a perfect, it's a win-win situation. Absolutely, and Dr. Klein, we have our first Facebook question in, so we're gonna give you that. Karen is wondering, why does my dog's breath get bad when we attend a dog show? How can I solve this problem? Recommendations on a product. That's an interesting question. I can only assume a couple of things. Uh, first of all, at a dog show, the dog may possibly be more stressed and may be panting more, so maybe you're smelling it more or you're in closer confines to it. Uh, that being said, maybe you're giving certain treats like liver or hot dogs that affect the breath of that. Maybe that they're not getting on a normal day-to-day -day basis. I would think so because I can't imagine that the artificial confines of a dog show change that dramatically mm -hmm. to a day-by-day -day event. So the other thing is, sometimes dental health and what you smell may be indicative of some other underlying problem. So first things first, have your dog checked by a vet. 
to make sure that there is no underlying problem that you're missing. So other than that, I can't think of any reason why a dog should exhibit certain signs at a dog show that they don't exhibit at home or other times. How <coughs> often would you say that a dog should probably be going to the vet for that professional dental cleaning? <coughs> I think it depends on the, the dog and the breed and the age. Uh, every dog should have at least a yearly veterinary exam. And as part of that exam, the veterinarian should examine the oral cavity. And that would be the teeth and the gums and any kind of problems to make sure in older dogs there's no masses or growth or uh, extra irritated gums. Uh, so uh, listen to the heart. Now, as dogs get older, oftentimes we recommend every six months. Puppies obviously get checked very often, but they have, are less likely to have teeth problems, except some dogs have what we call retained deciduous teeth. Deciduous teeth are baby teeth. And certain small breeds have baby teeth that don't fall out, especially the fangs or the canine teeth. So that's another reason why a veterinarian will be examining the mouth. And the problem is most people don't even look in a dog's mouth. So dental cleaning is a way for you to be aware and to start looking at places that you normally wouldn't look. Absolutely. And Dr. Klein, our next question is in. Uh, Janine is wondering, are dental products safe for dogs with digestive issues? Great question. I think it depends on the product, depends on the digestive issues. Some are flavored with certain products, and if certain, if, uh, certainly if a dog has a sensitivity to chicken, I would probably choose a product that is maybe fish flavored. Um, and I think that you have to talk to your veterinarian about what works best for that dog. But mostly, all of these products that we're talking about and you're using today, these have all been approved already. They're approved for effects on the prevention of plaque and tartar on dogs. Whether they're approved for that individual dog's digestive or other health issues, that's not the point on that. So if even though they're fish flavored, I think most dogs will handle it, but every, obviously every dog is different. If you're doing something, your dog has a bad effect, the first thing you do, like anything in the world, is you stop and you call your vet. Absolutely. Next question is in. Stacy says, how often should I brush my dog's teeth at home? Thanks. Well, as we mentioned, the ideal gold standard is every day. Mm -hmm. Is that going to happen every day? Well, Probably. I think some people do. They shame me. But I think <laughs> that, as we mentioned a couple of things, uh, plaque develops at least every three days. So if your goal is to minimize the development of plaque, if you do an every three-day program on a regular basis, I think everyone will be satisfied with that. I would like to say every day, but realistically, if you, at three times a week. And if you're, every three days. Every three days. And if you're keeping that plaque down, is that what would turn into tartar, that that's what you're preventing? Exactly. You're delaying the development of tartar. And tartar, as I mentioned before, are mineral deposits, mostly calcium, that accumulates on plaque. And that is hard to just brush away. You have to professionally just chip it off. Absolutely. Suzanne is wondering, what can I use at home for bad breath with my Yorkie one year old? Does it depend on the age? Does that make a difference? It doesn't. And we do know that there are some products made for halitosis or bad breath. So first of all, your dog should be checked by a veterinarian to make sure on a one year old Yorkie that the teeth are aligned properly. It has no retained baby teeth, which could be causing a problem. And make sure there's no underlying medical issues. They do make some sprays uh, that uh, are safe to use on dogs, and I think it's on that list. Some of them have natural ingredients like parsley and things like that that help to delay the breath of that. So, Also, the type of food you're feeding can also affect uh, the quality of the teeth and the quality of the breath. Are we talking about quality of food as well then? Quality of food and type of food. I think canned food has more of likely to accumulate on the teeth and so dogs that have to chew uh, will prob on harder food will probably have a less likely development of plaque and tartar. One general rule of thumb, and I think we need to know this, is well, should we give them all bones? The problem with giving bones is it can actually crack a tooth and cause dental fractures. The general rule of thumb is a dog shouldn't chew on anything that's harder than its own teeth. That being said, uh, every dog has you know, different strength of their teeth. We never want to give certain bones because they can also be dangerous to the gastrointestinal tract. Like cooked chicken bones, for example, will cause a disaster, so we never recommend things like that. And again, I uh, urge people to 
talk to their veterinarians, and look at this VOHC list of approved products, whether chews or sprays or wipes or gels, uh, uh, as a way to look at possible uses for their dog. And every dog is individual. What works for Maisie may not work for that person's dog. So you have to do a trial and error and then give it a little time and see how that works. All right, our next question is in. Cindy says, what types of chews or bone products do you recommend for reducing plaque? Thank you. Well, again, I don't recommend any one, but there's several things that we have. We uh, do actually have a few on set. I'll grab them. And as I you. mentioned, there's also dental sprays. They even have food uh, water additives, a drops where you can add to the water that changes the pH so that uh, these kind of things dogs can chew on and like Kong things and everything else. And sometimes these are... The, the products themselves are listed in the VOHC list of approved products for prevention of plaque, prevention of plaque and tartar, and those are foods and food chews, wipes, sprays. So there's a whole list of products listed that are, have been tested and approved. Now, are these types of products you would have to get through your vet's office or you could get them at any store? Some you can get through your vet, some you can get or order online, and so the names of the products are listed. You have to be careful on the size of these things. Obviously, if a Bernice, some of these come apart and making sure that the, this doesn't cause an occlusion in the esophagus. So they have to be appropriate to the size and maybe test them out and see if it works for your dog. We don't want other issues like choking on something like this to be a problem with itself. So teeth cleaning is great, choking is a little bit worse. So again, not every product for every dog. You have to use a little common sense, do a little research and talk to your vet. Would you say looking at these treats or looking at these items, are they better for smaller dogs, the size we're looking at, or larger dogs? This could cause a, a blockage in Macy's throat if she in, uh, accidentally inhaled this. So I think this would be careful. I'd make it into smaller pieces if you can. And obviously this is, could be a little bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. So this may not be the best for her. Uh, a general rule of thumb, you just want some kind of friction on her teeth. So, you know, depends on the dog. This might be better for her because she's not likely to swallow this. So putting that, this piece in that. Yeah, because this prevents her from getting at that and she's not gonna swallow this. But this could be a problem in a Bernese Mountain Dog because it could swallow this. So you have to kind of play a, a, a smart common sense kind of a thing. And also keep an eye on them initially and see how they work on it. Don't just leave them unattended, walk away or go to the store and come back and God forbid you may have some kind of catastrophic event. And that's the emergency vet in me talking because unfortunately I have seen little things like tennis balls get lodged in dogs' throats and things like that. So we wanna make sure that we're careful, that we do the right thing, but we're also not be paranoid. Unfortunately, I've become paranoid for 36 <laughs> years of doing emergency. That being said, it's not a reason not to do it. You just have to do it the right way. All right. Well, our next question is in from Karen. It is, is it safe to use a spin brush on your dog's teeth? Um, I'm assuming that it comes with a motor and a sound. And anybody that's used a pair of hair clippers on a dog that's never had it, <laughs> they freak out. So is it safe? I think that they recommend flat brushes, uh, ideally. And, and, and even though it sounds like it's great, like a, you know one of those spin brushes that we use on our teeth, uh, it may be safe, but may be harder to get them used to it. And for the long as it takes to do this to, uh, on their hand, and I think it gives you some kind of you know, rapport with your dog, a uh, spin brush is probably not unsafe, but I'm not sure it's any better. And most dogs probably won't like the sound of it. So that could be freak them out a little bit. And they're already having their, their mouths touched. To have that additional stimulus of noise when they're not used to it could be problematic. Absolutely. Now, Dr. Klein, is there anything you feel like we've missed with our demonstration with Macy or anything else you'd like to touch on that people should know? Um, I think always, like anything else, start a little, as early as possible. Be regular in your habits of it. Make sure you use approved products. Talk to your vet. They're there for your assistance. They'll either show you how to do it initially or give you guidance on how to do it. And then let us know if you have any other additional questions, too. All right. That's what you guys are there for. Right. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Klein. Very much appreciate it. And appreciate having Macy and Jessica with us in studio okay, to demonstrate. <laughs> all right, well, that is all for today. I'm Marissa Starback. Thank you so much for joining us. Next week on Ask the Expert, we will have a first time guest to the show, a professional groomer. Now, our professional groomer, Susan Scholler, will be here for both pets and show dogs for over 35 years. 
Susan's telling us everything you need to know about wintertime grooming. That'll be at the same time, Wednesday at noon, so get those questions ready. Plus, we release a brand new AKC Breed of the Day video every day at 9 Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow's breed, the Cherneco del Etna, so look out for that. Then catch us this Friday for an all new AKC Dog Center, live Friday at noon. Be sure to download AKC TV on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. AKC TV, sit, stay, watch. <laughs>